Thanks for joining us, everyone. I apologize that it's been so long since we've done our last YouTube video. COVID has not been nice to materials ordering and lead times and trying to get stuff. And even now, we were just got stuff in the last few days and it didn't quite work out here. And we we're scrambling and borrowing stuff and buying stuff that's in stock in other places and throwing it together. Amazingly, I love what came out even better than our original plan. And so without further ado, I'm Daniel Lott and let's do a tour of the Bear Den. Some of you may follow us on Instagram, and for those of you who don't, at True North Tiny Homes, we do a build update on Monday afternoons of a current build that we're working on and give updates as to how we're putting things together. This here is a final tour, but a lot of the information I'm gonna give you might have already realized from watching our Instagram. So the Bear Den is a 10 by 32 foot square model. So there's no outcroppings either way. And this was built for the States. So there's a few things that I'll show you in here that are a little different from what we would typically do for the Canadian climate. But let's take a look. One of the biggest things to note here is that we have really been perfecting the way we do our trailers. And everyone's just a little bit better. And I've gone into a lot of detail about this in our Instagram account. But you'll notice that our tires are behind the frame of the trailer. And we're building a flat deck trailer that's extremely low to the ground, almost as low as a drop axle trailer can get you, but having a flat base, which just works out awesome for the interior layouts and what we can do in there without having to worry about going around wheel wells. We do have to go to four axles, as you see, because this smaller tire that we need to get lower to the ground carries less weight, so we have to add another axle to be sure. This layout is essentially wide open space that allows for one level living. Obviously, the bathroom is closed off, but we have a Murphy bed here so that sleeping is on the main level. And then we also have a loft that allows for storage and or the occasional guest. You'll notice how bright and vibrant everything is in here. I really love the way this turned out and these bright and light colors really open up the space a bit more. Something else about tiny homes to take note of, of course, is the amount of windows that we always put in makes the space feel bigger because as you're looking, you see outside and that just makes everything feel bigger. So we do put a lot of windows in here. Also provides a lot of natural light to really brighten up this space a bit more. This is the first custom built Murphy bed that we've put into one of our units. We built it right from scratch, following a set of semi directions that we changed around to work for us, but it worked out really well and really happy with it comes down really nicely. We've custom built the height to match a lot of stuff that I'll get into later, but it's effortless. I can even stop in the middle of nowhere and it just sits here, so it's perfectly balanced. We've partnered with Endy Mattresses to get a Canadian-made mattress going in here. Unstrap, strap just holds it in while it's sitting up. It doesn't fall everywhere. Now we've got a nice queen-size bed here. This is horizontal instead of being vertical. That's kind of how they label them but this allows us to be able to still walk around the bed when it's down to be able to get to the bathroom at night or to get to the kitchen. Being custom built, we can configure these Murphy beds in a multitude of different ways, whether it's a queen size, twin size, king size, or whether it has a desk on the other side after it folds up is done horizontally or vertically, depending on the space. There's a lot of different ways to make this work. The unit that looks like a pantry unit beside the Murphy bed here is actually for clothes. So we've got our hanging rod on the top for shirts. And then in your drawers, you would have your uh, belts and underwear, shirts, folded shirts and pants. That's how I store my clothes at home in something very similar to this. Minimalist simplification. Join our workshops if you want to learn how to downsize and simplify but all of your clothes should be able to fit for one person into something like this. However, the reason that we've put this unit here is actually to get this Murphy bed a little farther away from being in a corner. And this allows us when it comes down to have this space beside the bed, which gives us that opportunity to walk around it and get to the bathroom at night. So what better way to fill that space than to put the clothes closet right there. 
Welcome to your spa. A lot of the stuff that we're doing in this home reflects the standards that we've been developing and the products that we want to continue working with. So reflective of the sink and faucet here, for instance, and the butcher block counters, not necessarily always going to be that color or always going to be butcher block, but some of the things that we like to work with and want to recommend to our clients. This is also our standard toilet, which is an American standard Cadet 3 dual flush for any of you who want to know specifically what that is. And as you can tell, this house was also designed to be on grid and not off. So it's a regular toilet running through a regular ABS plumbing system that would go to a septic or sewer. One of the things that's not standard for us is that this client chose to do a full stackable washer dryer. If I were to purchase this unit for myself, because I always like to throw this stuff into my videos, I would actually exchange this out, put in the small combination washer dryer at the bottom and gain more storage space. I would probably put shelves and open shelves in there and gain more storage space for myself in the house. Princess video, we built the bathroom ceiling height to six feet, which is just above my head. And I said in that one that if I were gonna do it again, I would build it a couple inches higher. Well, this ceiling height is six foot three and a half. And I love the ceiling height. It's by far the most comfortable that we can do and that anyone can do. And it gives you a good height in the loft, which we'll see later. Yes, this doesn't meet the Ontario building code because this would have to be six foot 11 for Ontario building code but this unit was built for the States. So we didn't have to worry about that for this one. However, we didn't start with that ceiling height and work around it. We actually started with the stack of a washer dryer here. And if you notice up in here, we only have a one inch gap on top of the, the top unit here before the ceiling starts. And that's, we started backwards from the height of that and went down to the bottom of the beams to make that work. And that's what created the height of the closed closet outside, which in turn created the height of the Murphy bed that we custom built so that everything lines up outside. Something that's probably not typical for a tiny home, a four foot shower. That being said, the next two houses that we're building right now actually have five foot showers. So who am I to say? Whatever you want, I'm sure we can fit it in there somehow. We've got a nice four foot shower in here, which gives you room to have a nice bench. And this is very typical for what we do when you have the tiled walls where we put white tiles on the two sides and we do a nice colorful accent tile on the back wall. And then we do that same accent tile inside the shower niche and it just gives us nice little balance of color. And that obviously has been matched to the siding on the outside. Another cool thing that we've been working on and if you remember the light strips that were in the shower in the princess, that was like a previous version. Now we've upped it again because Everyone gets a little bit better, but we have these really cool light strips in the ceiling here for the shower. And what I've done is I upgraded from a typical three and a half inch beam and I went to a full four inch beam on this one so that we could route her out a half inch on the bottom and not hurt the structural integrity of the beams that are holding up the loft. And we pop in this channel and it's got a nice LED strip in there that gives an awesome light in the shower and it's waterproof and it's flush, doesn't come down and hit anything, beautiful light. We're actually thinking I might wanna upgrade even the lights over top of our vanities to do that because it's less bulky and still gives a great amount, tremendous amount of light. The room that everyone forgets to draw in their own layouts for tiny homes and the room that we always try to put near the bathroom because that's where the most mechanical stuff is, is the mechanical room. We have room on the floor here for a well pump and expansion tank to be pulling water out of whatever for the supply. We also have our propane fired water heater uh, on demand, so tankless. And then we have our HRV unit. So this is something that a lot of people are asking for these days, but it's also something that we would have to do to meet Ontario building code. But it keeps the humidity level out of the tiny home and also exchanges fresh air from inside and outside. Like I said before, if I was living in a tiny home, that I had built, I would just crack the windows open and get a cross breeze and that would give me my fresh air. But a lot of people, especially this one, because it was made to go down to the States, want to be using their air conditioning system and to get fresh air, we use the HRV unit. Because it also works as getting rid of the humidity in the home, the intake for the HRV unit, we put in the shower. And then 
That also doubles as the bathroom fan. So it sucks the air out of the shower. It goes outside and then it sucks fresh air from outside, heats it up, and then we blow that out into the main room. Now let's look at the loft. You can see from the space above my head that we have tons of height given the height of the bathroom ceiling. This is what we're left with in our loft. The way that we build our homes, we end up with a tallest height of 10 foot to the tallest point of the ceiling in our home. So that's what I'm sitting under right now, subtracting the bathroom height. I don't have a mattress up here just now, so if we did have one, I would still have room to sit here. But this is kind of set up like a living room right now, as a second living room, or a spot uh, reading nook, or maybe where you're gonna come bring your laptop and sit and watch Netflix. This is the taller side of the loft, and I'll show you the lower side in a second, but one of the things to note, of course, is the massive windows that we get up here, and they do open, of course, so we get our cross breeze going, even in the loft area, and you get some awesome views from up here. So now on the lower side of the loft, I still have room to sit here, but not if I was sitting on a mattress. And the HRV that sits right below where I'm sitting right now in the mechanical room, the vent that brings the fresh air into the main room here runs through this bulkhead bench type thing that you see here. And it actually works out quite nice along this. Gives you a place to put your phone to charge at night or books to sit on so that you can just grab them off of here and read. Or like I'm doing right now by leaning on it with my arm. Kind of, uh, it's kind of comfy. Continue talking about systems. What we normally put in is the in-floor radiant water heat. And because this unit was built for the stakes, they were more concerned about air conditioning than heating. So we've put in a wall unit, ductless mini split. And this does provide heating as well. And we are running a kind of experiment over the winter to see how much nicer the floor feels now that we've upped the amount of insulation that goes in our floors while using non-in-floor heating. So the Millennial, which is the first model that we ever built, didn't have as much insulation in the floor and we had a ductless mini split heater and I found that my feet were extremely cold, which is one of the reasons why we've made our new standard to be in-floor radiant water heating. It is by far the better system to use anyways. However, if our feet are not as cold on this one, this might be a secondary option for even the Canadian climate. Although if you go too north, like we have a client from Yellow Knife right now, not recommended at all. Definitely need the in-floor radiant water heating. Another system we have here is the electrical panel. So our new standard is to always put the electrical panel beside the front door. The reason for this is you need to have three feet of clearance in front of your electrical panel at all times. And if we put it right beside the front door and at the end of the peninsula, there's very little chance that someone is going to put something here because then you would never get by your peninsula to your front door. So this area will always be free. And we've covered it up with a nice giant mirror, which also aids in making the space feel bigger. So let's look at what that looks like underneath. All of our units run off of a 30 amp electrical cable. This particular one actually runs off of 50 amp though, solely because the electric dryer. So this is one of the reasons why we like to use the combo washer dryer units because they use a lot less electricity and enable us to do a smaller electrical service. You'll notice our electrical panel has a bunch of boxes around it that look kind of out of place and they are. Again, it's because we had to build this unit for the states so we had to follow the electrical codes for the states but by using stuff that we can buy in Canada and also get passed through the ESA in Canada. It's kind of like it meets both codes, so it's good in Canada and it's also good in the US, but it means we have to have a bunch of different things. Typical breaker panel, you see some of those are off because we're not really using that right now, but the breakers had to be listed for the US, but in order to meet Canadian codes, we also need to be arc fault circuit interrupted, and we could not find breakers sold in Canada that are both listed for the US as well as arc fault circuit interrupters. So we have the breaker that's listed for the US that then goes through an arc, arc fault circuit interrupter that's rated for Canada and then goes to all the stuff in the house. So that's how we're able to meet both. The important thing to note here is that 
we are building to codes and we are getting inspections and we are building to different CSA standards that help us to put things in different places to be legalized depending upon where it's going, which code we're following. We like to put all the controls for HVAC equipment in one place and kind of out of the way. So we have that over here beside the Murphy bed, kind of tucked in the wall somewhere where you're not gonna go all the time or hit accidentally when you're trying to turn on the under cabinet lights or something. The light switch here is for the central fan unit that we always put in our units that helps distribute the heat up and down. That is definitely a must for high ceilings, but also for because we have a loft and the heat is gonna get trapped up there. We want the fan to bring that back down again and just more evenly distribute the temperature in the house. Some of the control units for fans these days require something to be inside of here. So we always put a master switch in depending on what kind of fan you may wanna replace it with later. And then this is the actual control unit for the fan so I can control the lights and the fan speed from here. And we just like to keep it on low constantly. And then we've got our control unit thermostat for the ductless mini split as well. Again, if all the stuff is in one location, you know if I'm gonna control heat or humidity or something like that from one place, I know where it is. Now, the piece de resistance, the kitchen. You may recall that I loved the way the kitchen turned out in The Princess, but I love this one even more. And we've just tweaked this just a little bit more by adding this pantry unit at the end. So it's essentially the same layout, but we added the pantry unit. This is not a pantry. Yes, it is a pantry unit, but it's not acting as a pantry. We're actually using this as a front hall closet. So you can see the hanging rod for your jackets, and I would be using this for purses and shoes and other things like that underneath. Keys and stuff probably in this drawer somewhere out of the way. But we have a pantry unit that is acting as our front hall closet. And this is actually a cost effective but very nice way to do a closet in here because it looks like it's part of the kitchen and the cabinetry. The same way we've done the clothes closet beside the Murphy bed. It just blends in a whole lot better and is a great way to do storage and get your front hall closet out of this unit. The rest of the kitchen here though, we've got our banks of drawers on either side of the range. These are our standard setups for doing a speed oven, which is a microwave as well as a convection oven underneath, 24 inches wide, and our two burner electric cooktop with a chimney style hood fan on top. This actually provides the lighting for our under cabinet lighting so well that we didn't have to put additional under cabinet lighting under our cabinets. It lights up the whole countertop quite nicely. The only thing I would do to make this back setup even better was if we toyed with an 11 foot wide model because then I could do a 24 inch wide bank of drawers on either side and get even more storage out of this. For those of you who've been following us for a while, you'll know I love my kitchens and I love my drawers in kitchens. You can get twice as much storage out of a drawer. So the more drawers we can put in here, the better. You'll see more drawers in my kitchens than anywhere else. So tons of drawers, that's what I'm looking for. Again, our standards, stainless steel appliances. They just look really nice. And I really like this fridge as well because it has no emblems on it and it's got no handles sticking out. So it's just this really nice, smooth feeling texture. Doesn't stick out farther than the countertops very much. Nothing comes in. So it's very good for a tiny home being non-obtrusive and it gives us a lot of nice storage out of it as well. You can notice we have, haven't hooked it up yet. I've been getting a few questions from clients lately about the way that we do our cabinets and I thought this would be a great opportunity to show how that works. I'm one of the very few people that still likes to use face frame cabinetry. I've been doing kitchens for about 20 years and one of my friends builds cabinets and he's explained to me how face frame cabinetry was so much more superior back in the day and it's something that's really stuck with me and something that I have stuck with as a standard for building. Face frame cabinetry is essentially cabinets that have a frame, like a picture frame built around it. This is solid wood. It gives a very strong structure to the cabinets, but it also means that we're able to paint this in the same color of everything else that we're painting all the cabinets in, rather than put on a, what we call cabinet tape on the front. So this is my preferred way of doing cabinets. 
you do end up with a little bit of a visible frame around it and that's something I do want to point out here as our standard. So when we get into something more like this, you do get a little bit of a gap between the different doors and drawers here and that's what you get with face frame cabinetry. It is possible to oversize the doors of this to cover a little bit more of the frame if that's something you're looking for more of a contemporary look. Thanks for touring the Bear Den with me. As of January 2021, this unit is currently for sale. It falls right within our average sizes and our average pricing for the year of 2020, and that's $125,000 Canadian, plus whatever tax for whatever region you're going to be living in and bringing it to. Some things don't always work out, and so this owner is looking to resell this unit. So if you like the looks of this, by all means, give us a call. Remember, it is January 2021, so if it's three years from now that you're watching this video, probably not available still, but guess what? I'd love to build you another one. Again, thanks for joining us. Remember, I'm Daniel Ott, and this is Upsize Down, where we turn housing on its head.